A while ago, I told y'all there's five things to remember before you get onto a minibus in Guyana. Well, it turns out there's actually more. Welcome back, culture fans. Today, we are revisiting everyone's least favorite form of Guyanese transportation, minibuses. If you have no idea what we're talking about, just go and watch our last video on minibuses somewhere here. Damo will put the link in, yeah. Anyway, before we get to the list, you already know what time it is. It's time for me to do what every YouTuber does around this time, which is for me to beg you to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. No, it's not because I'm desperate for your approval. Trust me, I don't need it. I love me enough for the both of us. I am actually asking you to do it so that we can trick the YouTube algorithm into thinking that video content from Guyana is actually worth sharing on the YouTube homepage. So do it, it's for the culture. All right, on to the list. Rule one, never pay for Granger. The $5,000 bill also known as a Granger. Don't ask me why it's called a Granger, just know that $5,000 bill, Granger. Even though it is legal tender and can be used for all payments throughout the nation of Guyana, the one place you should never pay with one is in a minibus. That is unless if you wanna hear a ticked off conductor tell you about the manner in which your mother made you. It might sound unreasonable at first, like why is he cussing me out? This is legal tender. But the average bus ride in town is only about $100. So to be honest, if you were to give me a $5,000 bill for something that just costs $100, I'd probably cuss you too, just, just saying. And that brings us to rule two, always know the cost of your trip. Different bus routes have different costs. A trip in town might be around $100, but if you're riding all the way to Parika from Starbrook Market, then you can expect to pay up to $1,000. That is unless if they rose the price, and so don't quote me on that. Nevertheless, inquire with a passenger as to the cost of your trip before you get into the bus because the bus driver and the conductor will not hesitate to rob you for a few extra dollars if you don't know the price. In fact, speaking of robbery, rule number three, never travel after 9 p.m. It's an open secret that criminals like to prey on people at the Starbrook market. But what a lot of people don't know is that these same thieves also like to rob commuters on the minibuses themselves after dark. Yes, like no lie, I'm not kidding. While the bus is sitting there at the market waiting for more passengers to fill up, armed individuals get on with the express intent of robbing every passenger on the bus before running off of their money. Although, to be fair, you're likely to get robbed in any part of Georgetown after dark if you're not careful. But being stuck in a minibus basically makes you a sitting duck. So travel after dark at your own risk. Rule four, never wear your best clothing in a bus. It will get ruined. Need not say more. And rule five, always avoid touts. Now this one's an important one because you see a tout is someone who a minibus driver actually pays to get passengers to get into their bus and no one else's. So the tout will literally use any means of lies, trickery, and whatever just to get you to step into his bus. I, I mean, seriously, between a Guyanese politician and a minibus tout, I'm really unsure who lies more. So if they approach you, go in the opposite direction immediately because you will most likely be placed into a bus where you're gonna hate the ride because I'll let you in on a little secret. Drivers who hire touts are the drivers who do not follow the traffic law. In fact, touting is illegal. Yes, it is a crime because, you know, they're a nuisance with no regard for personal space. Literally the only time in my life I've been sandwiched between two disgusting stink men was in the middle of the market. They were both trying to fight over me for me to ride the and if you're not prepared for such behavior, it could be a very jarring experience. From personal experience, trust me, it's terrible. And in fact, here's a bonus rule. Never sit next to the conductor. This one is actually for the ladies. If you want to have a quiet and peaceful ride, do not sit next to the conductor. The conductor basically sits there all day doing nothing but collecting the money, which means that he's got a lot of time on his hands. So if you sit next to him, he's going to talk to you. Expect to hear the careless whispers of a hot, sweaty man in your ear. So that was Minibus Rules Part Duh. If you like the list, 
give this video a like. If we missed anything, tell us in the comments. And finally, I notice most of y'all watching this video aren't even subscribed to this channel. So if you made it this far, hit that subscribe button and check out more of our content on our socials and of course our website, ftcguyana.com. And on that same note, since FTC, you probably noticed the new shirt I'm wearing. Yes, the For the Culture shirt. Yes, ftcguyana.com. We have a whole new set of merchandise. So this is just one of the many designs that we have available. So check us out. Check our website out, ftcguyana.com. And finally, if you're learning what to look out for when you're getting into a minibus, you're doing it for the culture.